Hi. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Trevor Israel, and I'm coming to you from the Gospel of Jesus Ministries. Well, today I'm here to talk to you about um, the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son. In the, the aspect as the Father being the, the divine and the Son is under him. The Father being the head, the supreme head, and the Son being under him. Jesus have always been working for his Father. Always. Jesus has always been working for the Father, which is the Most High God. We're going to start this out in the book of Revelation. Revelation 1 and 1. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angels unto his servant John. So right there, it tells you, this is the protocol, brothers and sisters. And this protocol does not cover from Matthew to Revelation. It covers from Genesis to Revelation. So if, just common sense, if Revelation 1 and 1 covers from Genesis to Revelation, is clearly telling you right there that God, who is the most high, or the highest, or the Father, gives the word to Jesus, his Son, who is the Christ, or the Savior, or the Messiah, or Emmanuel, and he give it to the angels, and the angels bring it unto man. Angels are also known as the Holy Spirit, or the Comforter. So right there, I can finish this lesson, because it clearly gives you the protocol. The Father gives it to the Son, the Son gives it to the angel, the angels bring it to man. Boom! It's finished. And that covers from Genesis to Revelation. It did not start in the book of Matthew, or Mark, or Luke, or John. Right? They are not equal in stature or in deity. They are equal in image. They are equal in image not in the same aspect as the both of them is the same because they're two different individuals but one is above the other somebody has to rule and in this case the father is the head all right let's go to isaiah isaiah 40 Isaiah 40, we're going to read 17 and 18, and we're going to skip to 25. 17 and 18, and then we're going to skip to 25. It says, Isaiah 40, verse 17, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? So, listen to, what we, listen to what we're trying to get. Whom can you liken God? Whom can you liken Jesus? Whom can you liken the Father? The both of them are the same in as, as far as being. The same being. Same kind of being. Because you cannot liken Jesus to man. Because he's not man. He is God. And you cannot liken him unlike the angels because he's not no angel. 
the only person that you can liken Jesus to at this time is the father the both of them right now they are two in the family of God which is the father and the son the father is the head he is the most high God and Jesus Christ is the son of God okay verse 25 to whom then will you liken me or shall I be equal say the Holy One who the father because the both of them are the same being you cannot liken Jesus unto man and you can you cannot liken him unto the angels he is the same being as the father right let's go to Colossians Colossians 1 we're going to read 13 to 20 Colossians 1 we're going to read 13 to 20 verse 13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin who is the image of the invisible God there you go brothers and sisters the image or the likeness image or likeness they're not equal in stature one is the father and one is the son one have always been the father because he cre they created man Jesus created man for the father one have always been the father and Jesus he says he is the same yesterday today and forever he is God and he changed not if Jesus is the son today what was he yesterday he was the son yesterday right this verse who is the image of the invisible God the first bond of every creature this is another thing some people say he is the first born from the dead yes he is the first born from the dead and went back to Godship but this particular verse is not talking about when he died this one is talking about the first bond of every creature every creature meaning every living thing every creature he is the first bond of every creature dog cat fish bird the, the dinosaurs he is the firstborn because brothers and sisters he is the one that created them so of course he had to be born before them he is the firstborn of every creature this particular verse is not talking about born from the dead this is born of every creature is something different as a matter of fact we're going to read the other one that he's the firstborn also from the dead right for by him were all things created that they are that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power all things was created by him and for him and he is before all things there you go he is before all things he was the first born of all creatures so tell me something in order for you to have been born or created that mean you was not there in order for you to have been born that mean you were not there simple English I can't see how people just take the scriptures and twist it and turn it to fit their agenda I don't know what the agenda is but it's just simple scriptures the word of God is simplicity we are the one man is the one that takes the scriptures and turn it upside down to fit whatever agenda they have he is the first born of all creatures in order for him to be born that means he was not there it's simple right 
and he is before all things of course he was before all things because he created all things verse 17 again and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead there you go he's the firstborn from the dead and he's also the firstborn of every creature that is two different verse is not the same the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have preeminence for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell and having made peace through the blood of his of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him I say whether they be in earth or things in heaven so there you go my brothers and sisters he was the firstborn of all creatures so if he was the firstborn that be, that's because he was not here the father brought him into existence the father brought him into existence that's why he was the firstborn of all creatures and he was also the firstborn from the dead and went back to Godship simple let's go to Hebrews Hebrews 1 and we're going to read from 1 to 3 it says God who at sundry times and in diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things so Jesus didn't have ear who gave him ear his father if there was the same or equal nobody would have to give him ear it would have already been his but he have to get it from someone the father gave it to him by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person there you go image likeness he is equal in image and likeness because there is no other being that you can compare him to you cannot compare him to man and you, can, you cannot compare him to the angels the only person that you can compare him to is the father that's why they are the express image of his person okay he is the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high who is the majesty on high none other than the father he always been the majesty on high he always been the majesty on high he always been the highest he always been the most high always god don't deal with spookery he's always been the most high he's always been the majesty and high he always been the highest always let's go to Matthew 28 Matthew 28 we're going to read one verse verse 18 Matthew 28 and 18 they said and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth my brothers and sisters if all power is given it unto him in heaven and in earth that means he did not have the power he have to have got it from somewhere if he was equal he would not have to nobody would have to give him the power it would have been his they are not equal one is the father and one is the son they are two different individuals 
one is the most high God or the highest that is the father it's always been like that always let's go to Philippians 2 Philippians 2 we're going to read verse 5 to verse 11 Philippians 2 we're going to read verse 5 to verse 11 Philippians 2 we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 11 so let this mind be in you which is which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God taught it not a robbery to be equal with God there you go again in the form of God the image of God the likeness of God same thing all of these scriptures is talking about image likeness form that's the key word the father is the only person you can liken him to you cannot liken him to nothing else no one else form image likeness him and the father both that's it they're not equal one is the father and one is the son one is higher than the other one they're not equal John 5 and 30. Let's go to John 5. John 5 and 30. John 5 and 30. Verse 30. It said, I can, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of of the Father which has sent me. These scriptures are very clear, brothers and sisters. They are very clear. They are very clear. This did not start in the book of Matthew. This started from the book in Genesis. He always been coming. He always been doing the work of the other one, who is the highest. Always. The both of them is not equal. One is the son, one is the father. One is higher than the other one. Always. Always. Somebody have to be in charge. Everyone got to answer to somebody. Except God. Everyone have to answer to somebody. Except God. He answers to no one. Jesus answer to his father. That's why he have to sit at the right hand of his father until the father make his enemies his footstool. Jesus has to answer to his father. No one else. The father answered to no one. No one. Let's go to Acts. Acts 1. Acts 1. We're going to read verse 2 and then 6 and 7. Acts 1 verse 2 and then 6 and 7. Acts 1 verse 2 and then verse 6 and verse 7 until the day which he was taken up after that through the Holy Ghost and had given commandments unto the apostle whom he had chosen verse 6 when they therefore was come together they asked of him saying Lord will that will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel and he said unto them it is not for you to know the time nor the season which the Father has put into his own power. Check this out. If there was equal, why would he say which the Father has put into his own power? If there was equal, he would have been able to say too, or he would have been able to tell him, or he would know. It says which the Father has put into his own power, nobody else his own power they are not equal again they are not equal let's go to Matthew 24 Matthew 24 35 and 36 Matthew 24 35 and 36 scripture heaven and earth shall pass 
Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, no man know, not the angels of heaven, but the Father only. Okay. What part of Father only is confusing to anyone? What part of Father only is confusing to anyone? He said, of that day and that time, no man know it. But the Father only. Some would say, Jesus know also. No, he don't. No, he don't. It says the Father only. And then we are going to show you now. Let's go to Mark 13. It says the Father only. So that means Jesus don't know. Because he have to sit at the right hand of the Father until their father make his enemy his footstool. Mark 13, we're going to read verse 30 to 32. Mark 13, 30 to 32. He said, Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus, that this generation shall not pass till all things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day, and that hour knoweth no man not the angels which is in heaven so we're talking about heaven listen here not the son the son is in heaven not the son but the father only the father only if there was equal why don't the son know it they are not equal they are two different individual one is the father and one is the son always always been that way always one have always been doing the work for the other one or of the other one let's go to john 17 john 17 and 5 john 17 and verse 5 it says and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Okay, check this out, brothers and sisters. Common sense. It says, give him the same glory back that he had with him before the world was. So that means it was before animals, before man, before everything. Give me back the same glory that I had with you before the world was. What is Jesus now? Isn't he the son? Isn't he the son of God? So he got back his glory. So why is he still the son? If there was equal. If there was equal, he would not be the son. He will go back to his equalship. But he's, he is the son now because he's always been the son. It's simple. It's always been the son. How can we screw up the scriptures like this? There's no way in the Bible that says... That the both of them came to an agreement. No scriptures in the Bible. No scriptures in the Bible that say or states that the both of them had a conversation and one beside one decided to become the father, one decided to become the son. Is no way in the scriptures. The Bible said, be careful not to add unto the words or to diminish from the word. Because the father don't like that say the word for what it is there's no place in the bible that says that both of them had an agreement that one going to become the son and one going to become the father nowhere from genesis to revelation is not in here the both of them is not the same and it's always been that way always and we're going to show you that also we're going to show you that Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. We're going to read from verse 13 to verse 17. And then we're going to do some skipping. Then we're going to do 22 to 31. Verse 13. Proverbs 8 and 13. It said, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, because a lot of us, we're full of arrogancy. We are arrogant people. And we don't like nobody 
to correct us. Some of us is above teaching. If it's their doctrine or their teaching or nothing. But the, the Bible tells you that God hates arrogancy. He don't like it. Puffed up chest, proud heart, God hates these things. All of us can learn from somebody. Why are we so proud that we can't learn from nobody? Because why? You think we think that because some people been in the world or you've been in the world longer than some other people, you can't learn from them? That is being puffed up, brothers and sisters. That is being puffed up. We all can learn from each other. God cannot give the word to one person. Can't. Because if he give the word to one individual, guess what can happen? That one individual can cause the whole world to go into the lake of fire. That one individual. That's why God said he raised up a kingdom of priests. We all are priests, man. We all can do this thing. But not only that, some people, God give everybody their own talent. Some is ushers, some is priests, some is prophets. We got different chores. He cannot give the word to one person. He had 12 disciples. He sent 12 disciples out into the world. He had more than 12. But he was dealing with 12. But he had more than 12 disciples. He had a lot of followers. He said, forward mode do I hate. And some of us are very rude, disrespectful, to, to especially the elders. God hates that also. If we don't practice the fruits of the Spirit, we are nothing. All these words that we know, if we don't have the fruits of the Spirit, all of this is counted for nothing. Nothing. The fruits of the Spirit, God, that's number one. If you don't have the fruits of the Spirit, no matter how much of the scriptures we know, it's counted for nothing. Food for thought. They say, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Jesus is wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Jesus is wisdom. He is the wisdom of God. Listen to what he said. By me, kings reign and princes decree, decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. This is Jesus. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. Let's skip down to verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. Listen, brothers and sisters. Why does Jesus have no beginning of days or no ending of days? The reason why Jesus has no beginning of days because when Jesus came into existence there was no days no nights there was no moon no sun nothing he is the one that created them so that's why he has no beginning of days because he is the one that created the days he has no beginning of days because he was here before the days when there was nothing he was brought forth when there was nothing. We're going to read it. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. When there was no fountain abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. Jesus, as I say, brothers and sisters, is wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom of God. He was brought forth. If he, for him to be brought forth, that means he was not there. Before the mountain. 
Remember, he was the firstborn of all creatures. He was before all. He was before all. He is wisdom. The wisdom of God. While yet, he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set the compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the cloud above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea his decree, and the water, that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, when I, then I was by him as one brought up with him, I was daily his delight. I was daily his delight. You was daily his delight. Brothers and sisters, a father and a son. A son is the father's delight. I was by him as one brought up with him. The son is the father's delight. This, this son is wisdom. Jesus is wisdom. He is the wisdom of God. Listen, rejoice in the habitable parts of the earth. And my delight were with the sons of man. Because Jesus always wanted to dwell with us. Not we with him. Because we are not going over there or up there. He is coming down here. He always wanted to dwell with man. Always. Jesus always wanted to dwell with man. We are not going to heaven. Now therefore hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Let's go. Let's go to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, we're going to read 6 to 9. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 to verse 9 and it starts that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel Where, whereof I was made a minister Paul is saying he was made a minister according to the gift of grace of, give, of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles an unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus so what it says it says God who created all things by Jesus so look at this the scripture is telling you who created God who created all things by Jesus and what we know from reading scriptures that Jesus is the one that created all things but the scripture says God this is referring to the father is referring to the father it says which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ Jesus have never take credit for nothing that he done nothing Everything he done, he did, he did it for the glory of his father. If there was equal, they don't, he don't have to do that. The both of them will have to do equal work. If there was equal, the both of them have to do this deal together. Why it was only one of them doing the work? Why it was only one of them? Why did one of them create man? Why did one of them create the heavens and the earth? Why did one of them put the sun in, in the sky? Put the moon in the sky? The stars? Why only one did it if there was equal? Brothers and sisters, that is ignorance. That is pure ignorance. They are not equal. 
Jesus has always been doing the work of his father from the beginning. Always. That's why only one of them been doing the work. Only one of them been coming down here to man. If the both of them was equal, the both of them would be doing it. Because we have equal partnership. No, this is not equal partnership. One is the head. Even in the end, he still has to turn over the kingdom to his father. He still has to turn over the kingdom to his father. In the end. He's always been the father. Always. Let's go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. This is what it says. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Brothers and sisters, this scripture is in the Bible for a reason. Jesus said, I am God and I change not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus is the son today, what was he yesterday? He was the son yesterday. What will he be tomorrow? He will still be the son of God. He is the son of God today. He was the son of God yesterday. And forever he will be the son of God. It's just plain. That's just how it is. And in the end, we are all going to be sons of God. Let's go to Hebrew. Back up to Hebrew 7. We're going to get to something that's going to be real interesting. Real interesting. And tell me, brothers and sisters, how can we wiggle out of this? Because there's no wiggle room. Something that is very interesting is coming up. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king and blessed him. So this Melchizedek, we're going to find out where he met Abraham. This Melchizedek is who? This is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the priest of God. Of who? The Most High God. Because the Father is the Most High. Brothers and sisters, He's always been the Most High. He's always been the highest of the two. Always. They were never equal. Never. They are two different individuals and the both of them has their role. One is the father and one is the son. One is the highest and one is the one under him. They are not equal. They are equal in image, likeness. Image, likeness. They are equal. Let's go to 20 and 21. Same Hebrew 7, verse 20 and verse 21. This is what it says. And inasmuch as not without an oath he has made priests, he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Let's go to Genesis 7, 14. Let's see where, where this Melchizedek met Abraham. And brothers and sisters, listen carefully and think. Put on your thinking cap. Think. It's not rocket science. Think. 14. I can't see how simple things like these can get people. As I say, I don't know what is the agenda. Arrogance, boastful, 
Genesis 14, 17 to 21. Listen, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Shadalamir and of the kings that were with him. This is Abraham. He went to rescue his son, his nephew Lot. All right. At the valley of Shavan, of Sheba, which is at Kingsdale, the Kingsdale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Brothers and sisters, please tell me this. If this is the book of Genesis, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say it again. Please tell me this. If this is the book of Genesis, Genesis is the very first book book in the Bible. There are 66 of them that is in this Bible. And Genesis is the first book in the Bible. And Melchizedek met Abraham and he is the priest of the Most High God. How much more do we want? What more proof do we want that he always been worshipping the Father or the Most High? or the highest. This is Genesis. We haven't got out of the first book yet. And Melchizedek, who is the Christ, who is Jesus, who was Jehovah, he said he is the priest of the Most High God in the book of Genesis. Some brothers and sisters, where does Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John comes in that he became the son then? Or he became he start worshiping them. How can they be equal if he's the priest of the most high God? The most high God is not the priest of Melchizedek. That's not the order. The most high God is not the priest of Melchizedek, or is not the priest of Jesus. Jesus or Melchizedek is the priest of the most high God. In the book of Genesis. It always been that way. Always. It's always been that way. It never changed. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is God and he changed not. If he was if he's the son or the priest of the most high God, no. He was the priest of the most high God yesterday. In the beginning, he will always been worshiping God, who is the Father. Always. Revelation 1 and 1 tells us. That the Father give the word to the Son. The Son give the word to the angels. The angels bring it to man. Revelation 1 and 1 covers the whole Bible. It does not start in the book of Matthew. So if it covers the whole Bible, it's telling us clearly that Jesus has always been working for the Father. Always. It's clear as day. Let's go to Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, we're going to read 9 and 10. Hebrews 7, we're going to read 9 and 10. Hebrews 7, we're going to read 9 and 10. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 9. And as I may say, so say, Levi also who received tithes paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when, Melchi when Melchizedek met him. So Levi was not even around yet. So we're not even around yet. But Melchizedek was around. And he was already the priest of the Most High God. He didn't become the priest when he came here to the earth. He did not become the priest when he came in the flesh. He was always the priest of the Most High God. Always. It's simple. It's clear. Why do we refuse to see that? He's always been the priest of the Most High God. He was not the priest when he came in the flesh. He did not come in the flesh and then he was be became the priest. He was the priest before that. He was always worshipping his father. 
always. They are not equal. They was never equal. One is the Father and one is the Son. They are equal in image. They are equal in likeness. But they are not equal in stature. One rules. The most high rules. But don't get me wrong. Jesus is the man. I am not debunking that. That is not what I'm saying. Jesus is the man. He is the door. There is no other door other than Jesus, our big brother. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get to a point that they're not equal. Jesus and the Father were never equal. That's what I'm trying to get at. Let's move on. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 55. Psalms 5 5. We're going to read 12 to 14. Psalms 55, verse 12 to verse 14. Psalms 55, starting at verse 12. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne born it. Neither was it him that hate me, that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man, my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. Brothers and sisters, his equal, yes, his equal, because the both of them is the same image, the same the the same image. There is none that you can liken him to. All his wisdom he got from God. He didn't get this wisdom on his own. He got it from the Father. He got it from the Most High. His equal in image and likeness. But one is the Father. One is the head. Look at that. He said, my guide Brothers and sisters, you know what the meaning of guide? Guide. A person who advise or show the way to others. Again, verse 13, it says, my guide, my acquaintance. Listen what it says. Guide. The meaning of guide. A person who advise or show the way to others. Second meaning. To show or indicate the way. So if the father was his guide, right? The father was his guide. Because the father what? Show him the way. The father show him the way. Or indicate the way to him. Everything he got, he got it from the father. Not the other way around. He got it from the father. We took sweet counsel together and walked and walk unto the house of God and company. Check this out. Yes, they take sweet counsel together. They are father and son. Of course they take sweet counsel together. They are father and son. Don't he have to sit at the right hand of his father? So his father can make his enemies his footstool? Of course they take sweet counsel together. And they walk in unto the house of God in company that's not his house that's the house of the father that's the father's kingdom Jesus kingdom has not been built yet Jesus kingdom have not been built yet there are two kingdoms the father's kingdom and Jesus kingdom where is Jesus he's sitting in the father's kingdom right now so he walked in the house of God which is not his house that's the father's house. So if there was equal, that would have been his house. Because they would have equal share. No. That's his father's house. That's his father's house. They walk together in the house of God in company. God the father was his guide. A guide is somebody that shows another person the way. That's a guide. They took sweet counsel together. Of course, they're father and son. 
Of course they have to take sweet counsel together. Oh my God. John 3.16 John 3.16 This is one of the most famous passages in the Bible John 3.16 For God so loved the world That he gave his only begotten son Past tense He gave his only begotten son For God so loved the world That he gave his only begotten son He had to be in his son In order for him to give him he had to have been the son in order for him to give to give him to the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus was always the son of God. It's plain in the scriptures. He's always been doing the work of his father. He's always been worshiping his father. He is the priest. From the beginning He did not become the priest In the book of Matthew Let's go John 1 and 1 Go backwards To John 1 and 1 This is what it says In the beginning was the word And the word was with God And the word was God Brothers and sisters Who is the word? Jesus is the word Word of what? Jesus is the word of God He is the word of God The word of his father He can do nothing of himself The words that he speaks is not his It is the father's Jesus is the word of God The word of the father The word of the most high The word of the highest He is the word, the word of God. Let's go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19, 11 to 13. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he do judge and make war because you know Jesus is coming to judge even the judgment had to be given to him the father said I judge no one but I commanded all judgment unto my son even the judgment had to be given to him he did not have it. If it, if it had to be given to him, that means he did not have it. It had to be given to him because his father judged no one. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name was called the Word of God. There you go again. His name was called what? The Word of God. The Word of His Father. The Word of the Most High. The Word of the Highest. Jesus says the word that He speaks is not His. He speak not. He says He can do nothing of His own. But what His Father tells Him to say. He is the Word of God. Let's go to Luke 1. Luke 1, we're going to read verse 26 and 27, then we're going to skip, we're going to read 30 to 35. 26 and 27, and then 30 to 35. And in the sixth month, an angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Of the house of David and the virgin, the virgin name was Mary. Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, 
and shall be called the son of the highest. Brothers and sisters, he shall be called the son of the what? The highest. He shall be called the son of the highest, which is the father. Nobody is higher than him. Nobody is equal to him. He is the highest. He shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. And this may and said then said Mary unto the angel, How shall that how shall that be? Seeing that I've never known a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest you see that brother and sister the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also the holy things which is born of thee shall be called the son of God you know what it says the power of the highest there is nobody higher than God God is the highest he is the most high there's nobody above him and there's nobody equal with him as far as his power is his his deity jesus is under him that's his son the father rules and he gave the rulership to his son our big brother let's go to psalms 110 Psalms 110. Psalms 110. Brothers and sisters, all the scriptures is right there in, in, in the Bible. How can we just run over them? How can we? They're clear. They don't need no interpretation. It's clear as day. Psalms 110 and verse 1. It said, The Lord said unto my Lord. This is David speaking. Listen what he says. It says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make that enemy that is put soul. This is David. David is way before the New Testament. It's way before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Way before Jesus came in the flesh. And you know what he said? The Lord says to my Lord. So David know who the Lord is. David know that the Lord is the most high God. David know that the Lord is the highest. David know that the Lord is the father of all. David know that the Lord is the father and the Lord of our Lord, which is Jesus Christ, which is the Messiah, which is the Savior, our Savior. The Lord, that's the highest, the most high. David knew this. So why don't we? David knew this. So why don't we know it? Let's go to Galatians. Galatians 4. Galatians 4, we're going to read 3 to 6. Galatians chapter 4, verse 3. Even so, we... Then we are children, we are in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of that time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. He sent forth his what? He sent forth his son, made of a woman. He sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we are sons of God, because we are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, our father. God, the father, has sent forth the spirit of his son. He sent forth the spirit of his son. So he been his son. He sent forth his son. He was his son. He's been his son. He always been his son. Always. 
he sent forth his son. English is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing, man. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, we're going to read 2 to 4. Proverbs 30, 2 to 4. Proverbs 30, verse 2 to verse 4. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and I have not understanding of man. I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of holy. Who has ascended up into the heavens or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in his garment, in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou can tell? Brothers and sisters, what is his son's name in the book of Proverbs? What is his son's name in the book of Proverbs? He didn't come in the flesh yet. He did not come in the flesh yet. When did he bound the waters? Did he part the Red Sea? Didn't he drown the world even? When did he bound the waters in his face? It was surely not in the New Testament. And he says, what is his name? And what is his son's name in the book of Proverbs? The Old Testament. What is his son's name? How can we read over these scriptures how can we not see Job 38 Job 38 3 to 6 Job 38 3 to 6 it says gird up now thy loins like a man for I will demand thee the answer of Answer thou me. I will demand thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. <laughs> Who has laid the measure thereof? If thou knowest. Who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon all the foundations thereof fasten? Or who laid the corner stone thereof? None other than Jesus. Where was thou when I laid the foundation? That's the same son. The same son of God. The same one who been doing the work of his father. Why is he the only one doing the work? Why the father did not do the work? Why the other one didn't do the work? His equal. That's because he's not his equal. He's not his equal. The father is above him. Or the other one is above him. Or the most high is above him. Or the highest is above him is not his equal that's why he's the only one been doing this thing he's always been working for the father always 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 it can't be no clearer always john 17 and 24 john 17 and 24 father i will that that also I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. So these men, Jesus is telling the Father, the men that you gave me, so they're not even they're not even Jesus, they, they belong to the Father. The man which you gave me. Be with me. Let them be with me here where I am. And they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world all of these scriptures is is it's so clear all of these scriptures is so clear all of these scriptures is so so clear thou lovest me before the foundation of the world brothers and sisters this is not matthew is not mark is not luke and is not john is before the foundation of the world before the world was created before there was any depth before there was any mountain before there was any fish before there was any dog lion 
zebras before there was any animal plants before the foundation of the world the father loved the son thou lovest me before the foundation of the world clear what more do we want what what are we looking for what more do we want why do we continue to not see the scriptures for what they are why do we continue thou lovest me before the foundation of the world the both of them is not equal they're two individual one is the father one is the son one is the highest or the most high god and one is the son of the most high always 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 first corinthians first corinthians 10 1 Corinthians 10, we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. 1 Corinthians 10, we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, moreover, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the clouds and all passed through the sea, that were all baptized and were all baptized under Moses in the clouds and in the sea, and did eat, and did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ oh my gosh the rock that followed them was Christ which Christ the same Jesus Christ the same Son of God followed Moses them coming out of Egypt before Matthew Mark Luke and John before he came in the flesh Christ follow them <laughs> oh my jeez I'm not even going to say nothing about it it's clear people don't like when somebody else have the truth I don't know what, what it is some people some people Somebody come out with the truth, or somebody have the truth, or somebody have a little knowledge, and some people, I don't know if it's jealousy or what it is, arrogance. You know, but as I say, God cannot give this thing to just one person. He can't. No way he can give this word to just one person. The reason being because if one person goes south, the whole world will end up in the lake of fire. He cannot give it to one person it's a body and there are many members of the body the body have two eyes nose mouth hands feet there's many members of the body he said he raised up unto your kingdom of priests so one person cannot be no priest can't in the book of Revelation, it says it will have seven churches that God have to send these angels to, to deal with them. One man cannot be no priest. He sent 12 disciples out in the world, and he had more disciples than that. But he was, the, book, the book was just focusing on these 12. But God, Jesus had more disciples than that. One man can't do this thing. We have to stop being arrogant. We have to stop being boastful puff chested because God hates these things these are things that God hates and when somebody come and they they have a little knowledge help them work with them open your eyes open your mind you can't be close we can't be closed minded because if we are closed minded we will never learn anything if we are closed minded we will never learn anything we have to open our mind when you open your mind, then you can see clearly and take the hatred out of our heart because hatred will take us nowhere. Again, I says, if the, we don't have the fruits of the Spirit, no matter how much of this book we know, without the fruits of the Spirit, all of it is for nothing. All of it is for nothing. All of it is for nothing. We have a lot of us, a lot of our brothers out there who is 
boastful and puff-chested because they think that they know all. No, brothers and sisters, you don't know all. We all are members of the body and we all have the potential to do this thing. We all, God gave all of us this thing. And if we serve him the way that he wants us to serve him, he will give it to us. He said he will do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants. So if you serve in him, he will reveal his secrets to you. No matter whoever think that you're serving the devil or serving another God, they are not God. And they are not the judge. God is the judge. But well, listen to this. Let's read one, one more verse and then we close out. Galatians 4. Let God be the judge. Galatians 4 and verse 16. Listen to what it says. Am I, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? It's in the scriptures. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? The truth hurts. It says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So if you don't know the truth, brothers and sisters, we are still not free. We are still in bondage. Without the truth, we are in bondage. When you know the truth, the truth sets you free. And you cannot make people your enemy because they tell you the truth, man. It's for you to open your eyes, open your mind, wake up. Brothers and sisters, I hope we have a little, I hope we got some understanding from the scriptures. Peace in Jesus' name. One love.